Are you, do you feel 100% now? Do you feel like your old self? Uh, yeah, getting there for sure. Um, you know, it's every, every game, it's continued growth, continued to a continuation of, of raising the bar and, and trying to be as sharp as I can. Is there anything that you re realize you can't do yet? Or? No, no. Uh, there's, I don't think there's anything that you know, my body's saying, oh, I cannot do that. Um, so I feel, I feel good in that aspect. And how do you, the defense, you've got the first clean sheet, you know, you know, really limited opponent's chances in the first three games. How do you feel that's coming together? Uh, yeah, there's still definitely areas where we're, you know, looking back at video and looking back at clips. You know, how do we deal with different situations? How do we, you know, you're, you're striving for perfection, right? And, and so every, every play, every, um, every pass, every ball, can we be a step this way, a step that right way? Um, how do we, how do we fine tune things? And, and so that's, that's now the, the process. It's really early, three games in undefeated though. Yep. First place I find United has to feel good. But I, honestly, I might be wrong, but I don't know if the team has started undefeated ever, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. So what is that, what is that a sign of? Um, no, I think it's a sign of, you know, uh, when I talked to you guys before the first game of the season, talking about what preseason was all about in terms of, you know, the understanding, the terms of getting better with each and every game, with every training session. Um, I think that's what it's a sign of, of more and more clarity, more and more understanding of each other, understanding of the tactics of what the manager and the, the coaches are asking of the players. Um, and then obviously in terms of execution, going out and, and getting close to it, because like I said, it's, it's not been perfect or, or great for an entire 90 minutes, and, and that's what we're clearly striving for. Portland comes in, you know, anytime Timbers are come to the stadium, there's sort of like a flashback to 2018. Um, what do you take away from these types of matches against Western Conference teams? They're traveling all the way to Atlanta. You guys are in a good spot. They are really in a good spot. They're a good team, obviously, but what's the goal other than Continuing on this evolution. Yeah, we, we, we need to we need to get after them. We, we need to make sure we put them on the back foot. We put them under pressure um, that we that we take the game to the, to, to them. Um, you know, it's not easy these these cross country flights. It's not easy with the time zone and trying to get acclimated. And then all of a sudden you're, you're you know you're hearing the referee blow the whistle for for the start of the game and it's like oof, game started. Um, you know the. The, the outlook has to be on us and, and what we bring into the game and, and how we approach the game. And so um, we know they've got good players. We know obviously they've got a few injuries. Um, you know, they've clearly been traveling. Uh, all these things considered, we, we need to be looking at ourselves. What about the team already results here? Um, it feels like this is a good opportunity to change that. Is the team understanding that? Like, yeah, I think that you've mentioned from the small details. Yeah. I think it ladders up to making home field advantage. For sure. Part of this you, you, you have to. You have to. And, and we know with our supporters behind us with a, a rocking Mercedes-Benz Stadium that it's a, it's a difficult place to play. And, and we need to make sure that we make it a, a fortress as best we can in terms of, you know, not allowing teams the confidence to come and play, but then also not, not picking up points and, and allowing us to say, right, we're going to take max points at home. And, we're playing at home, and, and this is what we're about at home, and this is who we are, and we're trying to stop this in, in, in almost like a um, you know a, a bullish attitude of when we step on that field on, on that turf, that is we're we're, we're there for business and we're looking for them. Push him off guard. You noticed perhaps of his leadership or his just his presence around the club um, that stands out to you. Uh, to be honest, I mean. I, I think he's got a lot of his play uh, in terms of running the club. Uh, you know, in terms of like being with the players, it's, it's not as if we're with him. You know, we, we may see each other in passing in the, the cafeteria or, or in the hallway or something, but it's not like um, there's a whole whole lot of interaction. And so, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to fairly comment on, on that specifically uh, just because there's not enough to, to give it. You told me recently that uh, goalkeepers typically end up in being effective in leadership positions after they play. I mean, you're going to be a TV, so I guess it doesn't matter, but if you 
What do you th What do you feel about Face that? Face for TV, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I mean, because he, I mean, he was a goalkeeper. No, of course, of course. Player. And we've, we've chatted about that. You know, we chatted about that. And I think when you look at the position of a goalkeeper in general, um, you, you know, that's part of the job description. You, you have to be able to organize. You have to be able to problem solve. You have to be able to communicate in a way that gets the best out of the guys in front of you. And, and maybe that's screaming at somebody or then maybe putting my arm around somebody else or or kicking this guy up the backside saying hey let's go you know getting started sort of thing um so I, I think it comes with the territory of being a goalkeeper and um yeah i mean obviously he's had a fantastic uh career so far in terms of what he's been able to do after playing and um i think when you look at, at goalkeepers in the middle it's, it's just i mean it almost comes natural so your perspective as a goalkeeper, through three matches, much seems like there's much more improvement in defending set pieces. That's been a big focus for fans, supporters, I'm sure, in your training sessions. What's, what do you think has led to any improvement in that aspect of the game through these first three matches? I think just ruthlessness, you know, accountability. Um, you know, set pieces are a massive part of the game, obviously. And you've got to be able to defend your box. You've got to be able to put teams under pressure when, when you have a, a set piece and you have to be able to take advantage. And so... Um, you know, just that uh, ability and, and bravery to to say, you know, I'm either A, not going to let my guy score, or, or B, I'm going to go and put my head in the mixer and I, I may come out with a, a cut or, you know, so be it, but I'm going to make sure that I get there first and, and win the ball. You're very aggressive in the box and you've come across some of your teammates' hands and, and hit them and things like that. How do you handle that? Just as a, not, not handle it, but is that just part of the game? You're going to bump into somebody, you apologize afterwards, you just give them a pat on the back. Like, what? how do you handle that? Yeah, but I think that, well, that, yeah, question, that question should probably be directed for Franco Escobar. Yeah, uh, yeah well, yeah. it has been a few over the years, but yeah, Franco, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's part of the game. Different interests. All part of the game, so that poor guy, yeah. Do they come to you afterwards? Do you just say, I'm sorry, or are they, hey, I yeah. drive there next time? My, my bad. Try, try to get out of the way quicker. <laughs> Simple as that, really. All right. Hey, Brad, I want to get your perspective on uh, Caleb Wiley and the week that he had. You've seen him since he was just a little guy bouncing around here uh, as a captain. You know, what is it to see that homegrown do that? Yeah, uh, I think more importantly than obviously the goals, I think there's just the confidence that he has on the field and, and the accountability that he's taken uh, to, one, be in the first 11, but then, two, to go on and, and be a, a – an important player for us, you know, a guy that you know is, is the reliable, dependable, and and we know when the ball goes out to him that he's he's gonna say, yeah, come on, give me the ball, and I'm gonna take somebody on, or I'm gonna get to the end line, or or you know, in the case of last week, score score two goals, right? So, um, you know, that part has been really impressive to see, and, and you know, we st we still give him a we keep him humbled, we keep him grounded here, through, you know, Monday to Friday, um, but you know, it's that that part's exciting, you know, he's he's got. Up Obviously, he has a bright future ahead of himself. Um, but, you know, I, I think he's got the, the right work ethic, the, the right mentality to, to go on and do great things. But, um, you know, for him, it's day by day, week by week. Brad, what did you think of a unified event last night? Yeah, yeah it was. Why has it been so important for you to be the better? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, I've always said, you know, the unified uh, the unified team is always, it's a special, a special encounter in terms of going out to trainings, going to the games, seeing the kids on the road trip. And, you know what it means to them to, to spend a night in a hotel potentially without their parents and just with their teammates um little things that that you know you and i probably take for granted uh that some of these kids have never done before and so to be able to give them that opportunity to see the smile that it brings to their face um you know that uh, that to me is is really cool and so uh to be a part of it last night uh, another successful event in terms of the signing session and, and they were all buzzing afterwards i think there were a few nerves Going up there in front of the, the the you know the crowd and the attendance and and all that, but uh, but afterwards they were having a good time and, and singing with the supporters, so I think everyone enjoyed it. Miles said uh, in the preseason that if he didn't come back bigger or stronger and faster, he was going to be disappointed. How does he look to you so far through these first three games? Yeah, he's looked really good. Uh, you know, I, I was never uh, doubting the 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 bigger and stronger and faster part. Um, for me, I think the the part that's really impressed me is his calmness on the ball and his ability to find passes and take the ball under pressure and, and find an outlet. Because I think if you look in preseason, there were times where maybe he's tried to hit a diag or maybe he's tried to hit a ball down the channel or just a bit under pressure and, ooh, let me get rid of this, you know, whatever. 
now I think over the last three weeks you've started to see him yeah, give me the ball under pressure, let me hold off the striker and find a ball in into you know Luis, into Brooks, into uh, Franco um, Ibarra, you know, whatever it may be, right? Into a midfielder. So um, you know, I think it's been great. So far, just talking to Jason, like a counter press has been really impressive to start. How would you describe the evolution of the spine? Yeah, I mean, again, I think when you, you know, from the outside, uh, everyone is very quick to, to judge new players when they come into the team, right? And, and some players settle a lot quicker than others. And when I say quicker than others, I'm talking maybe it takes them a month to settle or, or two months to settle as opposed to maybe a year to settle or six months or eight months or a year and a half, right? And so I think you're starting to see players that have one settled in to Atlanta United, um, two have under have settled in into understanding the tactics of how we want to press, how we want to, to play and, and almost knowing that, okay, if this guy goes, I've got to be here or that guy goes, I've got to be there. And what do I have to do when, when this happens or when that happens? And I think when you have that, it starts to look like we know what we're doing. Um, and so, you know, that's encouraging that you guys are saying that it looks good from upstairs. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, it's an ongoing process. And I don't think it's so much the spine of the team as it is the, the understanding of, of the 11 guys on the field at the moment.